One verse, so much truth. Our verse today to focus on is going to come from 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to look at the surrounding scripture. And uh, chapter 3 will be verses 11 through 24. Let us uh, remember our main scripture verse coming from Joshua 1, 8. And it says, Keep the word of God always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So we need to always remember to meditate on the Word of God day and night. So some questions related to this section of Scripture. How do you feel about your fellow believers? Do you feel compassion towards them? Do you worry about their well-being? Do you keep them in your prayers daily? So think about those things. Our verse says from 1 John 3.16, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. The same verse from the King James says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So key parts in this verse. Love, in the Greek, means affection, goodwill, benevolence, and brotherly love. Life here, so the breath that is spirit, made up of multiple Hebrew terms, meaning soul, self, life, mind, living being. Wind, breath, mind, and spirit, and living and alive. So the soul the moral being designed for eternal life. And one additional word, brethren. So a brother, a fellow man, a fellow believer. So in the context here, we're looking at a fellow believer. So, Scripture, starting with verse 11 in chapter 3. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. So Jesus told us this was the second most important commandment. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So here we see that Cain, who was the firstborn of Adam and Eve, his younger brother Abel did what was righteous. Cain did what was evil. So notice how Cain treated his brother. He ended up killing him. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. Jesus told us that the world hated him, so we should expect it to hate us because of Him. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. In death, we cared nothing for others, only for ourselves. Now that we have life, we see what is at stake for others. We have a heart of compassion for the lost and the fellow believer. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother and sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This statement here is conditional. If you don't love your fellow believer, you haven't received life. 
Think about that for a minute. To lack love is to remain in death, spiritual death. If you hate someone, it is compared here the same as murdering them. And a murderer is not going to heaven. In our verse, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So how do we know we love? By our example, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he died for us. This example we are to follow. The word lay down means this wants us to not be selfish, to remove selfishness from our lives, and to be cash, compassionate towards others, to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, even unto death. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother and sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? If you have and see a fellow believer in need, you need to provide for them. This is selflessness. To not provide is to be selfish. God will provide. God's Spirit dwelling in you will lead you to do the same. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. It's not enough just to give lip service to someone in need. Our actions must show love and compassion, doing it because of love and not because we are required to do so. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. If our heart condemns us, we know that God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. So this is the test. To know if we actually belong to him. Because God already knows the condition of our hearts. If your heart condemns you, which means to find fault with, to blame, to accuse, you accuse you of what you are doing or not doing. You're in the wrong. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. We have confidence in our actions when our heart does not condemn us. We know because of that, because our hearts do not condemn us, we have a peace in what we are doing and a joy therein in doing. And receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. So when you are right with God, you will be doing His will in your life. So when you ask, you will be asking for the right things. And it says you will receive. And this is the, His command, to believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as He commanded us. First, love the Lord your God. Second, love your brothers and sisters. The one who keeps God's command lives in Him, and He in them. And this is how we know that He lives in us. We know it by the Spirit He gave us. Our Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, gives us discernment. We know that we live in Him, and don't live without Him. We know that He lives within us. We can only know this through the Spirit. Now let's take this section and use some Scripture to interpret Scripture. So it's verse 11. <clears throat> For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, 
so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. John 13, 34, and 35. And he said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. John 15, 13. Verse 12, Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So Abel did right with his offering to God, but Cain did not. Genesis 4, 8, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out into the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. 13. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. Jesus said, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But, you have cho- but I have chosen you out of the world, that it That is why the world hates you, John 15, 18, and 19. He goes a little deeper, saying this, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not for you to take them out of the world, but to protect them from the evil one, John 17, 14, and 15. So, not for us to be taken out of the world, but to protect us while we remain in this world. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. 15. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother and sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. So related to murder, Matthew 5, 21 and 22. You have heard that it is said To the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to punishment. But I tell you, anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Revelation adds to this, to the list of those remaining in death, and what death he is speaking to. It says... But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Revelation 21.8 Our verse, verse 16 here. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. John 10, 11. Notice what Paul says here. So we carried for you. We cared for you because we love you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. 1 Thessalonians 2.8 If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother and sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? In the Old Testament, we are told, If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites, if any of the towns of the Lord, of the land of the Lord, your God, is giving you 
Do not be hardened or tight-fisted towards them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Deuteronomy 15, 7, and 8. I love this next part, this section of text here. And it says, But if someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. James 2.18 Verse 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Ezekiel helps us to understand this. In chapter 33, verse 31, it says, <clears throat> My people come to you, as they usually do, and sit before you to hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Their mouths speak of love, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. So Paul says it like this, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Romans 12, 9. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. Dear friends, if your hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Paul says, In Him and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and and confidence. Ephesians 11.3 And receive from Him anything we ask, because we keep His command and do what pleases Him. Also here in 1 John, in chapter 5, 14 and 15, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask for anything according to His will, He hears us, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have what we have asked of Him. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Mark 7, 7. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Jesus said, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. John 6, 29. The one who keeps God's command lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. First Thessalonians four eight tells us this. Therefore, anyone who rejects his instruction does not reject a human being but God, and very the very God who gives you his holy Spirit. Our verse. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 1 John 3.16 Love like Christ loves us. And if you see a brother and sister in need, give to them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open us up to the faults that we have. Open our eyes <clears throat> to the need of our brothers and sisters. Help us to love as your Son loves. Amen. Have a blessed day.